But first I want to talk about the toppling of statues because this week has been, there's a Wikipedia page specifically dedicated to statues that have been toppled. In fact, I'll just like, just if you haven't seen it, like these are statues that have been, oops, these are statues that have been toppled uh, during the quote George Floyd protest. Now, again, these are not George, George Floyd protests, as we've said before, these are uh, Marxist protests. But nevertheless, it's a long list of statues. And I want to talk about it because I think we're, we're being distracted. Um, the conversation is a distraction because we're getting caught up. A lot of us are getting caught up in specifics around um, who is this person? Should they be toppling this particular statue? And what's the actual, you know, there's a, the emancipation, um, uh, what's it called? I think it's called the Emancipation Memorial. Uh, was one of the ones that's targeted to be taken down or, or attacked or they're trying to defend it. And, you know, people are trying to talk about, well, you know, the slaves, slave, uh, freed slaves funded it uh, voluntarily and Frederick Douglass was, you know, dedicated this statue. And then the other side is saying, well, you know, the slaves didn't get to choose the design and then there's a, uh, a black guy kind of kneeling down in front of Lincoln, and that's bad. So we're getting caught up in all this. And, and I think most of what I would call the conservative arguments, and I'm not trying to throw conservatives under the bus here, but most of the conservative arguments seem to be centered around preserving our past and tradition and the importance of history in, in some kind of abstract sense. And history, history is important, and, and I don't think those arguments are necessarily wrong. Uh, I just think they're weak. <clears throat> they're weak arguments. And as, as uh, Rib... Rotgut just pointed out in chat, uh, Republicans are largely silent. That's true. The Republicans are also largely silent. And even the voices that we're hearing are mostly, uh, they're few and far between, and they're mostly about tradition and, and like I said, the, the importance of history in kind of some, some weird abstract sense. And uh, I wanted to point out to you all that it's not, in my opinion here, it's not the statues that matter. Um, we are getting caught up in, I think, the wrong discussion. And I'm going to play a clip from V for Vendetta. It, it it starts with my favorite line from V for Vendetta, but that's not actually the line I want you to pay attention to. It's the rest of it. So I'm going to play this clip and we're going to talk about it. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. And you're going to make that happen by blowing up a building. The building is a symbol, as is the act of destroying it. Symbols are given power by people. Alone, the symbol is meaningless, but with enough people, blowing up a building can change the world. So, I want to play that clip because the conversation to be having around these statues is around symbology. Uh, I guess we'll have that conversation in a moment. Carrie is calling in my ear here, so hold on. Let's see. Hey, Carter. Harry. Yes. Hi. What Hi. did I miss? Uh, well, I'm about to. I, I started a discussion about symbology, uh, statue symbology. So. Okay. Um, but uh, I'm going to split screen us because everyone wants to see you and say hello to you first before we continue the discussion. Well, hi, and just so you guys know, I might have, I might, I'm probably going to get interrupted at some point and have to step away. My my AC repairman got here a little late, and uh, I'm dealing with an AC problem. So. Yes, but we that might happen. happen. Yeah. And uh, all right, so so I, did, I played a clip from V for Vendetta Carrie about uh, okay statues being or not statues but buildings being symbols, and then the same applies to statues. And the conversation I think we should be having about this is you know again Carrie and I both talk about viewing politics more in terms of individualism versus collectivism or philosophy that, that way rather than Republicans and Democrats and, the, and that kind of stuff. Um, and, and really, that's the battle that we're having here. Philosophically, it's this self-ownership, right? You own yourself or you're owned by other people as a means to their ends, whatever they vote on and decide is your ends. So those are the two those are the two spectrums, right? And, and dictatorship is you're owned by one specific person and socialism is you're owned by everyone, uh, but you're owned, right? And individualism but is you're, you're unowned. unowned, right? Yes. Uh, so, so that's the scale that we need to, to, to be using here, right? 
Um, and I have uh, I have a message to the small government, which I think is most people here. Uh, I I have a message to the small government people that are that are paying attention, and I want you to imagine. Close your eyes. Imagine a fantasy <laughs> uprising. Imagine. Imagine that there is a, an uprising of small government proponents, right? Um, and these same statues, all the statues that are being toppled now that we're all mad about, these same statues in this, in this fantasy, these statues are revered by the big government people. They are viewed as symbols of greatness of large government. And you're part of the resistance movement. And the resistance movement is individuals. They're all individualists. And they want to tear down the system, just like these guys do. But... But you want to replace the system with what the founders intended. Uh, you, you're all, you're, it's a movement of strict constitutionalists, right? You want to return to the individual principles that this country is based on. And so you're tearing down these statues and you're declaring that these statues represent the bloat and overreach of the federal government. They've come to represent tyranny instead of individualism, instead of freedom from tyranny. You probably wouldn't be pulling down Thomas Jefferson's statue like these guys are, but whatever, right? You're pulling down statues, right? In this case you would probably be on the side of the people pulling down the statues. You wouldn't be making lame conservative arguments about the need to preserve history. You would be saying, we need to take the country back. We need to return to individualism. We need to destroy the symbology of the large government that owns you. Carrie, you can open your eyes, by the way. I don't know. Did you fall asleep okay. or what? Um, you told me to close my eyes and imagine, and I was waiting for you to... There's nothing Never more mind. to this imaginary thing. <laughs> okay. like, the statues are falling, but you would be on the side of the statues being toppled. What's, what's important here, what we should be focusing on, we're in the middle of a cultural revolution in America, a, a bad cultural revolution, like Chinese cultural revolution in America. The question we should be asking is what do the symbols represent and why are they tearing them down? They are not tearing them down individually. If you'll notice, they're very sloppy. They tore down a stat. They tore down a bust in in Golden Gate Park here in the Bay Area. They told they tore down a statue of Ulysses S. Grant or the bust of Ulysses S. Grant. It's like what the guy like led the Union <laughs> Army. <laughs> like uh, why? Why are you tearing down these statues? They're not. They're not discriminating about that. Um, in terms of yeah, individual, they tore down, or they they defaced a uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan statue. <laughs> right. But they're, they are doing this intentionally, and I, I think they're doing, I'm going to use this word, atheists, bear with me, fellow atheists, I'm going to use a word, I think this is what I'm calling spiritual terrorism, that's what they're performing right now, yeah. they are against the people uh, and the values, the principles of the people who value the, the founding of America, individualism, uh, freedom, self-ownership, limited government, they're against you. If you value those things, you are the enemy, and they need to destroy your will to fight them. And to do that, they go after what you love because you love them. That's why they're going after the statues. Not because the statue is a particular thing, but because you love it, because you value yeah. it. That's why it's a target. It's a target because it's yours, not because it means a thing objectively. It's a target because it is yours. And by tearing down the statues before your very eyes, right, they want you to watch the destruction of your values. They're showing you that your values are not safe, right? Regardless of what any particular statue represents or doesn't represent, they're declaring war on your values. And because you I mean, specifically, it's the, the principles of America, the founding of America, the, the values of the founding of the nation. And that's why this is all, that's the symbology. This, is, this symbology here is about the founding of the nation. And I'm calling it spiritual terrorism because they want to make you feel isolated, afraid, and hopeless. You're supposed to feel yeah. that your values have already been destroyed. You watched them get destroyed. Individualism is dead. There's no reason to fight it. This is psychological warfare, and it's intentional. And that's what is, that's the discussion we should be having, not about whether one particular guy in the statue owned slaves or didn't own slaves or did enough for slavery or the posture of this guy in the statue is too subservient to that. That's the wrong discussion. It's not about tradition and history. It's about why they are doing it. It's psychological warfare designed to destroy the principles and the foundation of the United States. They're not putting up statues of Marx. They're not replacing them with anything. 
right? Even though we know they're Marxist, by the way, Carrie, did you see that? We'll do that later. Uh, they're not replacing them with statues of Marx and Lenin. They're not saying these are the people we want. They are just saying your values need to die. Watch as we destroy them. That's what they're. That's what they're doing. And I don't see. Someone in chat said the Republicans are silent. Absolutely. Screw the Republicans because they're silent. But even the conservatives mostly aren't making this point. They're making mealy mouth points about the, the importance of history. Hmm. Well, that's my rant. Sorry, Carrie. I'm kind of on board with you, but kind of not because, okay. yeah, because uh, I agree with you that this is spiritual terrorism. I just don't. How would you suggest people talk about it in that way if they're not talking? Because if you start talking with someone who supports this, Here's a great example. Okay, here in my little town, uh, that same city council, woke city council member I've mentioned before, in her little group of woke activist robots, mm -hmm. they are trying to tear down. There's a there's a statue there that's been up for a hundred years on the square, and it's uh, a memorial to Confederate soldiers who died. They are trying to take that statue down, and they've been out there protesting at 9 a.m. like every week. They're really ramping it up online. They're trying to get, they're moving, they just moved it into the last city council meeting. <clears throat> they got a bunch of, they're really great at organizing. They got a bunch of their little zombies to all send letters. Yep. They're all in these groups. I'm in some of the groups. I see them, they're really great about like, here, send this, copy paste, here you go. You're like giving it to you, you know? Um, how do you tell them if you were out there or if you were confronting one of them or let's say you wanted to go to the city council me meeting and make a case right i don't think for you're going to like my statue. answer what's what's your answer i don't care i would use the death i would let the statues get pulled down and use it to rally the troops uh, about why the statues are be pulling, being pulled down and to point out what the enemy is about and the, let the enemy show themselves and fight the enemy. We can rebuild statues. We cannot, if if we if we spend our time arguing in city council meetings about keeping up statues of Confederate monuments, we lose. That's a distraction. It doesn't freaking matter. We can make the monuments again later if you want to. That's not a problem. We are losing the country. We are losing. So then, so you let them pull down the statue and then what? I, you use the statue as a, you use this behavior to shed light on the principles behind this movement and you do what we're doing you talk about individualism you talk about why the founding principles of america are important and you show the enemy for what they are and you show why they're doing this and you quote things like i mean we can play the clip if you want from the the i mean this isn't news to anyone who watches the show but the co-founder of blm caught on camera saying that she's a marxist right i mean Oh, they admit it, yeah. Uh, yeah, they've always admitted it, right? And But the, a lot of people the, well, are the like, leaders, ooh, they were caught saying it. It's like, they're not caught no. saying it. They've been saying it blatantly for decades. You just don't listen. Here's the, here's the thing is the leaders, <clears throat> the ones with bad intent, they admit it. They know what they're preaching, and they know most of them. I, I'm saying, roughly speaking, <clears throat> they know they're preaching a form of Marxism, and they knew it when they were indoctrinating me in college 20 years ago. Yes. We read Marxist uh, philosophers. We read Foucault, you know, we read, these things were part of my women's studies curriculum, but most of the people who preach it and who are indoctrinated like I was, don't realize they're preaching a form of Marxism. Even though I read Marxist thinkers, I couldn't have defined Marxism if you asked me to. Well, and if somebody had to told to. me, right. they don't want you to be able to, I didn't understand it. I didn't read enough history outside of in. So they give you little uh, they don't give you the history of Marxism. They don't give you like, here's what happened in the Soviet Russia. Here's what happened in Maoist China. They don't do that. They take philosophers like Foucault and then they they um, they use it to push. They change it. They use it to push this new kind of Marxism, this identity politics based Marxism. Yep. But they don't call it identity politics based Marxism. They call it social justice. They call it intersectionality. They call it some of them even call it, they call it liberalism. They call it progressivism, even though it's not progressive and it's not liberal. Um, but so the, most of the people who, that, like that leader who in the tape said, admitted she's Marxist, the leaders know it's Marxism. Most of the people who are speaking it, all the soccer moms you see on your profile now suddenly speaking all the words, they don't know it's Marxism. They don't, know, they don't even know what Marxism means. And if you say that, oh, you're speaking Marxism, they look at you like you're, you've got a tinfoil hat on. 
<laughs> well, because <laughs> what they they've done, what yeah, and, and this yeah. is, it's the same thing they actually did with the SJW word, right? They, there's yeah. a term that describes them. In the SJW case, they invented it. Actually, in the case of Marxism, they invented it. Uh, and in, in the case of communism, they invented it. Uh, and, and then when that word becomes tainted because people see it for what it is and therefore it's used derogatorily to describe them, they just say that you're ridiculous for calling them that. They, yeah. For the SJW word, they say it's just a, oh, that's just a slang, you know, um, derogatory term. For Marxist and communist, they just laugh at you like you're a crazy, you know, conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Um, but it's the same thing.